And today I am going to wire the batteries. Belly button is right there, her umbilicus, which is why I think it's a hernia. Gather round all you floaters. G'day everybody, it's Sheridan from the future here. Currently episodes are about 10 weeks behind real time, but we wanted to let everybody know tomorrow is launch day. Well, every, everything goes according to plan. We will be splashing tomorrow. Um, and we just wanted to let everybody know that patrons will be getting a um, video tomorrow that'll include footage of the splash and a bit of a live update on how it all went and how we're feeling about it all. Right now we're feeling excited. Everything's been triple quadruple sex toppled checked um, so hopefully all goes well tomorrow uh, we'd like to take this opportunity to also say a huge thank you to everybody who donated and all our patrons who make our work with the animals possible but in particular who made this launch day possible it's been an extremely long journey and yeah we're very very excited for tomorrow all right you will be caught up soon on videos we don't have a huge amount of boat work footage left uh, we're going to be speeding through it to get you caught up. And yeah, hope you really enjoy this episode and yay for tomorrow. Wish us luck. You got it? Yep. It was out with the old and in with the new. Our old boat batteries were a bit worse for wear after a year without any charge. And so we'd ordered new ones. Before we could install the new batteries, we had to run some diagnostics on the solar panels. We were only receiving around 9 volts into the solar charger and should have been getting more like 20. With the help from our friend Mark, an old salty electrician, we had figured out which of the panels was causing the voltage loss to the solar charger. It's giving me 20 volts, so it must be the wires. That must mean, I'm pretty sure that means the panel's working if I'm getting 20 volt reading here. But then down there, I get at most 9 volts from it. Which I assume means one of the wires is bad. So if I run a new wire, then hook it up, in theory it works. Alright. Two days later, after some animal surgeries and um, having to go to the hardware store and things like that, we have wire and fittings and are going to pull this wire through so we can um, reconnect the solar panel with new wiring and hopefully then it works. So basically what I'm going to do is tape these two together and hopefully pull it down the hole. Can we get in there? Oh, hold on one sec. Yeah, if you give it a little push, there we go. All right, yeah. Ah, the camera's stuck. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna start pulling. Pulling it through from the locker in through here, it'll eventually run down this wall to the solar panel. Good? All right, so I've just stripped this white uh, insulation part of the wire back and freed the negative and positive so that I can now attach some connectors and then we will attach the solar panel, then attach it down here and uh, run it all through. All right, all ready to go. It's probably too far to really come out on the GoPro, but it might. I don't know. Yeah, I think you can see the mountain. It's pretty. setting up to do surgery on Luna. Um, we think she might have a hernia, but we won't know for sure until we open up and see what the lump is on her belly. 
and we're also going to spay her while she's asleep. Um, there's a small chance that she may have an infection of the uterus or kittens because it does feel kind of big in there. But she technically had an injection to stop her having babies, so we'll see. Oh my God, is that? Yeah. Ready to go. So although this looks to be a hernia, I don't actually know what I'm dealing with. And if it turns out it's a lump of some sort, I might have to actually take a larger area for surgery. So I'm shaving her a bit more than I normally would for a spay to make sure that the whole area that I might need to cut through is completely prepped and sterile. Just in case. Her belly button is right there, her umbilicus, which is why I think it's a hernia, because that's a very common spot for fat to poke out of. So now that I've loosened it up a bit, you can just see it's a big chunk of fatty tissue, so that's good news. So I'm just going to remove all this fat, then I open her umbilicus up where the hernia came out of, so that I can have nice clean tissue there, open it all up a bit more, take her ovaries and uterus out and close it all up. So just here is going inside her abdomen. You can see this hernia is coming out of there. And I was wrong in a way, it isn't a midline hernia, it is off the midline. So this is her midline here where her umbilicus is. And this is actually coming through her muscle layers. So perhaps it was a traumatic hernia. Maybe she got hit by something or picked up by a dog or anyway, either way, treatment is the same. So you can see that this little bit of fat, I just accidentally, this is normal fat from in her abdomen. And then this is the abnormal fat that's been outside the abdomen for a long time. So we'll try and put this bit back in and separate this hernia from her healthy fat. And the healthy fat can go live back in her body and the hernia fat can live forever. So it turns out she has both a um tiny umbilical hernia then this larger, tiny umbilical hernia and then this larger hernia here. So I wonder if she possibly was bitten because you can kind of imagine where that hole is and this hole is like something maybe grabbing hold of her. All right, we'll stitch this little one up first and then we'll spay her through the umbilical hole. Mm. I think so, yeah. Tal vez tu un poquito pa metra. So there is pus in her uterus. It's not a lot, but it is there. So we'll definitely put her on some antibiotics um, for after surgery as well. After the veterinary work was done, we were back on the boat to finish the battery installation. Let's see if we can get them all in there. Yeah, I have concerns about the fitability. That bit in. Room to, spare. room to spare look at that that was awkward well done they weigh i think it's 28 pounds each so they're pretty awkward to maneuver today i am going to wire the batteries uh we'll see how long it takes which means very soon we'll be starting the engine but first wire everything up to our brand new batteries okay so i have some plans on how i'm going to connect the batteries as you can see they fit perfectly in the compartment. They're an upgrade from our last batteries in that they're 29 um, size and the last ones were 27. So these ones have a higher reserve capacity, which means um, we'll get a bit more out of them, which is really good, especially when you combine all three, each with higher amp hour rating, we're then doing well. So they'll be connected in parallel, which means they'll still be 12 volt, but we'll kind of have the added benefit of additional amp hours. So yeah. 
that will be good. Um, yeah, should be pretty easy really. There's not too much to connect because we managed to leave everything connected to the bus bars, which means I've only got a couple to connect to the batteries now, so now that everything's a bit neater. Um, I did, however, wire in right there. That is a new propane detector that I ran under here, through here, and to here. So that'll be permanently connected to the batteries, um, as will some of the build pumps um, he here and here. So build pumps, propane detector, permanently wired so that they are always on so that uh, it doesn't matter if the, if the house or the engine is disconnected. And then basically the house battery uh, the house wires run up into here which runs up to our control panel so we've got kind of a few points to control either like say the fridge on its own or the mains on its own or the windlass the inverter um, and then all of the lights and fans and water pumps and stuff batteries themselves isolation switches so yeah that's kind of the basic setup and chuffed does have a um what is called a floating electrical system where it is in no way connected to the hull uh, which, in my limited opinion, um, is the better way to connect for a aluminium boat. Um, there is some information on grounding, some people do it, um, and seemingly that can be done, but I just don't want electricity touching the hull. I think there's much more resources saying don't do that, so I'm, that's how we're going. It's a floating system. Yeah. All right. Time to start wiring. Right, so that's all my positives connected, the batteries are connected to each other, and then my um, house, bilge, propane, solar engine, all connected. Um, and you can see I've smeared uh, just cheap old, plain old cheap Vaseline um, onto the terminals, which just helps offer a bit of protection, uh, in, and it's cheap and easy to do, so yeah. Right, for better or for worse, I've decided to convert uh, the bilge pump here into an automatic bilge pump. So it will have a little float, and when the float, uh, if ever, the float gets pushed up from water, it'll just automatically come on. Now my little bilge pump is connected here. And I'm going to start wiring all the negatives. Bilge pumps. Bilge pumps. Ooh, propane. Where's my little propane friend? That's why it's good to run through each circuit in your mind because, yeah, I forgot to hook up one of the negative propanes. Now I believe it is all actually connected. Um, so I'll start to do some testing. You can already see that the propane light is blinking. I don't know if you can see that from here, but that's good. Um, yeah, uh, just to mention too, <coughs> Just to mention too, um, I have had the solar panels covered this entire time. So um, although working with like, I mean, the solar panels go up to 20 volts, working like kind of on that 12 volt scale is not super dangerous. Um, yeah, still took safety precautions to try and stop zaps and stuff like that. And I also, with my main wrench, I did wrap it in some insulation just to try and prevent uh, a risk of shorting something if I accidentally kind of touched it against positive to negative or something like that. So yeah, uh, all in all, that wasn't too bad. Moment of truth. That's good. Oh, wait, I bet that's the wrong cabin lights. Aye, there we go. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Yay, we have electricity. With all the wiring connected, we ran some tests with the voltmeter to identify any current leaks, and we did find two. One was easily fixed with a new wire, which was very kindly provided by Andreas and Sailing Less Plastic, who has all the tools to do such things. 
And the other was an antenna up the mast, which we will fix in the water. We are about to start the engine. I'm very nervous because I have this like thing in my head that it's going to somehow knock the boat off the stands when I start the engine, which I know is stupid, but I am worried about that. Uh, but I'm also worried that it just won't start, so we'll see how it goes. Find out next week if the boat falls off the stands from old Janet's vibrations. And remember, patrons will be getting a live video update from our splash tomorrow. We couldn't have made it here without them and all of our donators, so a huge thank you. For all of the crew, until next time, Stay chuffed, everybody.